extra hepatic biliary artery extra means outside hepatic means liver biliary means bile duct atresia means failure of canalization failure of canalization of biliary tree is known as extra hepatic biliary atresia 1 is to 10000 to 16000 live births asia more than africa females are more affected than males family history present left lobe and right lobe of the liver left hepatic duct right hepatic duct common hepatic duct cystic duct and the gallbladder common bile duct pancreas and pancreatic duct ampulla of bladder second part of duodenum bile is produced from the liver and is stored into the gallbladder when food is present in the duodenum the bile is secreted from the gallbladder to the duodenum in case of biliary atresia bile cannot pass from the gallbladder to the duodenum or bile cannot pass from the liver to the gallbladder or to the duodenum etiology is unknown predisposing factors may be intrauterine factors example maternal diabetes single nucle nucleotide polymorphism example cfc1 in the left hand side we have gpc1 add3 and arf6 the extrinsic factors bacteria and viruses cmv rio rota hsb6 and evv results into dysregulated immune response which causes biliary atresia with associated animals and isolated biliary atresia on the right hand side there is no affection of extrinsic factors thus resulting into biliary atresia with splenic malformation ucv is changed into cv by ucd that is unconjugated biliary vein is converted into conjugated biliary vein by bulkernal transferase so in atretic conditions the pressure increases and the conjugated biliary vein bile cells and cholesterol goes to the blood the bile cells and cholesterol causes pruritis each skin the increase in conjugated biliary vein results into increase in urobilinogen in urine resulting into dark urine as there is atresia bile cannot reach the duodenum so there is no bile in the intestine so this bile cannot be converted into stercobilinogen so there is no stercobilinogen so there is clay colored stool and there is jaundice due to hyper bilirubin especially due to increase in conjugated bilirubin the liver is enlarged for and lower border can be felt it is due to cirrhosis it is rare and it is after some months congenital and acquired genetic factor is present in congenital no genetic factor is present in acquired type clay colored stool in first day and clay colored stool after two weeks that is after 14 days after associated anomalies polysplenia situs inversus malrotation preduodenal portal vein interruption of inferior vena cava continuation of achigus vein acquired type is caused due to autoimmune inflammatory response due to viral infection classification type 1 type 2 and type 3 in type 1 the common bile duct is atratic or stenosed in type 2 the right and left hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct is atratic in type 3 all the extra hepatic biliary apparatus is atratic type 1 restricted to common bile duct type 2 proximal extra hepatic duct are atratic type 3 entire extra hepatic biliary system is atratic 
investigations let's start with the labs we do liver function tests as AST, ALT, alkaline phosphatase which increase in, in both bone and liver pathologies, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase which increases only in liver pathologies, CVC, total bilirubin and direct bilirubin, metabolic and serologic screening and coagulation profile. So here gamma glutamyl transpeptidase is very much specific for extra hepatic biliary atresia. Imagine we do ultrasound because it's safe, cheap and very easily available. These are the th things we look for in ultrasound of extrahepatic biliary atresia. Texture of liver, ascites, dilated intrahepatic biliary tree, stenosed extrahepatic biliary tree, associated anomalies, fibrous plaques with the Doppler for aberrant blood vessels. There are three important things that is strangular cold line, gallbladder motility and gallbladder gastroid. Here you can see the triangular cord which is known as triangular cord sign. This is always present anterior and superior to porta hepatis. It is triangular ecogenic more than 3 mm in thickness. Gostroid, the length of gallbladder should be less than 1.5 cm. There is thin gallbladder wall and the counter is irregular or lobular. You can see here the irregularities and the length and the thin gallbladder wall. HIDA scan is hepatobiliary immunodeacetic scan. Here we inject intravenous dye into the blood which is taken by the liver and is secreted into the bile and then to the duodenum and, uh, and then we do imaging. Pre-operative phenobarbital is used to promote biliary secretion and to increase tracer uptake. Here in this image we don't see duodenal uptake, we just see liver uptake. Technetium 99 is used in this imaging which is a immunodeacetate compound. We can just exclude extrahepatic biliary atresia, but we can't diagnose extrahepatic biliary atresia. MRCP, Matic Regionis Cholangiopancreatography, excellent imaging of biliary tract, but it is very expensive. Endoscopic Retrograde Cholangiopancreatography, ERCP, it is very invasive. Liver biopsy done by needle biopsy. Gold standard, these giant cells, peripotal inflammation and peripotal fibrosis may be present or absent, but by ductal proliferation, it is always present in the liver biopsy of extrahepatic biliary atresia. Here we have surgical causes of jaundice, that is differential diagnosis, ESBA, colidocal cyst, cystic dilation of all or part of common bile duct, incipitated bile syndrome. It is followed by hemolytic process which increases bilirubin load or due to prolonged bed rest with total parental nutrition. It can be differentiated by ultrasound, bile duct perf perforation, intraoperative cholangiogram. It is done during the intraoperative procedure for extrahepatic biliary apparatus, which is known as Kazai operation. It can be done um, by open incision or by laparoscopy. What we do is we observe 
the condition of stenosis. If there is small non patent fibrotic, we, do, we go for operation. If not, we do aspiration. After aspiration, if the result is white mucus, we go for operation. If we get green after operation, aspiration, we inject, inter, we inject dye into the gallbladder and take x ray images. If there is opacification, it is normal. If there is no opacification, you go for Kajaha press. Okay. So, for diagnosed cases of extra hepatic biliary optresia, Kajaha procedure should be done as early as possible in infancy because delayed treatment will result into progressive cirrhosis. In type 1, we remove the common bile duct. In type 2 and type 3, we remove all the extra hepatic biliary arteries, biliary apparatus. After removing the biliary apparatus, we divide the jejunum, and the distal jejunum is connected to the hilum of the liver. And we make connection between the proximal and distal jejunum so that food and bile can be mixed together. In this figure, we can see the cauliflower like stoma of jejunum is connected to the liver. In second one, the proximal part is kept longer, and in the third part, we keep a just small one centimeter proximal part. And we make a uh, opening, uh, opening the, that you want in the jejunum. So the third one is correct, whereas first and second is incorrect. In the third one, we can make a stoma as you want, and we can put uh, and there is the proximal part is required one. We should give vitamin K in cases of extra hepatic biliary atresia because there is decreased absorption of vitamin K in ESBA and we got to do liver transplantation if the Kazai procedure fails or if there are complications of chronic liver diseases. Thank you for watching this video. Give some feedback on the comment section and subscribe.